So let's go through the paper again. In this paper, in the fourth year, under financial statement analysis, there are six questions. Six questions are focusing on the six area of the syllabus. First one, you have the introduction about the financial statement, their purposes and their usages. Then the second one is cash flow statement analysis, cash flow ratios, including their impact. Then the third one is what are the types of financial analysis and the usage and how we are going to report under each method of analysis. Then in the fourth one, we are focusing on the inventory. And the fifth one, we are focusing on the long-lived asset. So, in this paper, we have to write five out of six questions. Each question is optional. So, you can select the question, depend on your circumstances and your capabilities. Right? First question is focusing on the theory part. So, this is mainly focusing on the first chapter itself and there may be some parts added with the other chapters as well. The second question is focusing on the but it is focusing on the ratio analysis. So here you have to calculate the ratios. Most of the time five marks will be allocated for the ratios and 15 marks is for the report. So don't waste much time for calculations. You have to write the report to score more marks in this question number two. Then third question is focusing on the inventory. Here, you know that you have learned there are three types of inventory evaluation methods. So there will be a question for calculation as well as there is a portion for the theory as well. Because this is financial statement analysis, in this one, we are rather focusing on the calculations. Then, question number four is focusing on the cash flow. So here, we are focusing on cash flows, free cash flows. Then, how we are going to calculate the accrual basis cash flow and how we are going to convert it into the cash basis. Then cash flow ratios and the fifth part is focusing on the analysis so there are several types of analysis we are using in the financial statement analysis so here we are focusing on the theory part and in the next one we are going for calculations as well as Depend on the calculation, we have to provide the suggestions and we have to interpret what is the suitable company and what are we are going to invest and what are the future recommendations for the particular board of directors or the managers. Then question number six is all about, but it's all about the long-lived assets. So in the long-lived assets, there are three parts focusing on. First one, the physical or the tangible assets. Second one, intangible assets. And the third one, financial assets. In your syllabus, they are mainly focusing on the tangible and intangible assets. So this question number six is all about assets. Yeah. You know that. LK16 is covering property, plant and equipment. Then LK38 covering intangible assets. So you have to go through these standards as well in order to answer these types of questions. Since this is financial statement analysis, we are going to focus on the impact on the ratios based on these different types of asset and whether we are going to capitalize whether we are going to expense these assets, depend on that, we have to suggest the companies the future investment arenas. That's all about the paper itself. Now, since you have requested me to go through the inventory elevation, inventory methods, and cash flow analysis, as well as the types of analysis, I have prepared this presentation. 
So in this presentation, I'm only going to cover three parts. That is question number three, focusing on the inventory. Question number four, focusing on the cash flow. And question number five, focusing on the common size analysis. So let's see question number three. That is the inventory. So the first question is focusing on the theory part. An organization has to make choice between inventory valuation methods. So we have to list down any four factors they have to consider before making an option. So you know there are three main inventory valuation methods. FIFO, LIFO and weighted average method. FIFO means first in first out. What are the inventories coming to the organization? We are going to issue them first. Therefore, our cost of sales reflected the earlier prices. And the closing stock reflect the current prices. In the inflationary scenario, inflation means the prices are gradually increasing. If you are using FIFO, the cost of sales figure may be lower. However, the closing stock figure may be higher. Now let's move on to the LIFO method, right? So in the LIFO method, what we are going to do, here we are going to issue the current or the recent stock first. Therefore, our cost of sales figure may be high. However, the inventory figure may be low because since we are issuing the recent stock, the inventory reflect the previous stocks which are made in the earlier time period. Now, let's move on to the weighted average method. Weighted average method, here we are going to use the FIFO for inventory issue. However, in the inventory records or inventory valuation, we are going to take the prices and based on the weights of the stock, right? We are going to weighted average the inventory. Here, most of the time, the prices are in averages. Now let's see what are the factors we are going to see before we are selecting an inventory valuation method. So, here in this paper, they are only focusing on four factors, which is giving four marks. First one is we are have to focus the tax saving. So we know that in the FIFO method, the inventory value is high. If the inventory value is high, then our gross profit is high, as well as the net profit may be high. If the profits are higher, then the tax portion will be higher too. In the case of LIFO, the closing inventory value is lower. If the closing inventory value is lower, gross profit value also lesser. At the same time, the net profit figure may be lesser compared to the FIFO method. In the case of Inflation, if we go for LIFO method, then because of the lower profit figure, we can save the tax. However, weighted average is going on a moderate path. Here, the net profit is average when compared to the LIFO as well as FIFO. Now, let's see the second factor. It is inventory materiality. Inventory materiality means what is the proportion of the inventory figure in the statement of financial position. If we are in the manufacturing sector, then the materiality of the inventory may be higher. However, if we are in the service sector, materiality of the inventory figure may be lower. 
because in the service sectors we are using small portion of inventory sometimes this may be the stationery sometimes this may be small sort of filing systems likewise but in the manufacturing sector we have to keep larger portion as raw materials and working cap work in progress therefore the inventory material is higher in the manufacturing sector itself here we have to select what is the best inventory valuation method so in the case of rising prices if you are using the fifo method the tax portion may be higher in the manufacturing sector however this have a lesser impact even though if we are using fifo in the service sector now you know the opposite impact will go on on to the lifo method in the lifo method even in the inflationary situation right inventory is reflecting the older prices therefore inventory value may be lesser now let's move on to the next one that is inventory variability inventory variability means the changes in the inventory so you know that when it comes to inventory we have discussed that there are two portion of cost mainly actually there are five types of cost but because of the eoq we are only focusing on two costs that is ordering cost and holding cost if we are using the inventory for production if the inventory movement is high the variability is high if the variability is high sometimes we may have to spend more cost for orders then the ordering cost may be high and if the variability is low we have to store more stocks in the warehouse so the holding cost may be higher depending on the variability of the inventory we have to select fifo or lifo we know that in the fifo one the closing inventory value reflect the current prices but in the lifo closing inventory figure reflect the older prices so we have to keep in mind and based on the inventory variability we have to select the method then the final one is inventory obsolescence or outdation in the lifo method what we are going to do we are going to issue the current stocks earlier if we have selling if we are going to sell vegetables if we are going to sell the grocery items we know that each item will be expire soon so if we have the expiration date then we can't go for life or in that sort of materials this life or method is most of the time used when we are going to sell antiques as well as in the beverage sector for wine for beers likewise so in those type of products the if you are storing the inventory if it's taking time that's value higher as well as the antiques so for the antiques if the older antiques are higher than the recent antiques therefore lifo method is suitable for that types of inventories if the inventories are obsolescent frequently we have to go for fifo rather than for lifo for each factor you will get one mark and the final one is leverage leverage means the impact on the debt to equity ratio so if we are keeping more stocks then our equity figure is higher then we can reduce the gearing 
at the same time if you are focusing on the current assets ratio if the current assets are higher then we have a higher liquidity in these two scenarios if we are focusing on the fifo method that is better now let's see the next question that is what is lifo reserve lifo reserve is an account used to bridge the gap between fifo and lifo cost when a company use fifo method to track inventory but report under the lifo method in preparation of financial statements we have to prepare this lifo reserve so let's see the formula lifo reserve equals fifo valuation cost minus the lifo valuation cost actually we have to take the closing inventory value of fifo and lifo and we have to take the difference between them so you are getting two marks for explain this scenario right so firm that report under lifo have to report this lifo reserve in the financial statement under the disclosures now third one is briefly explain the factors that result in declining in the lifo reserve so let's see what is lifo reserve again lifo reserve is the difference between the fifo valuation and lifo valuation if we want to reduce the lifo reserve what we have to do is we have to either increase the lifo valuation or either decrease the fifo valuation one way of increase the life of valuation is declining the price so how we are go going to see the declining price and its impact on the life of valuation so when the prices are gradually decreasing then in the fifo method right focus on that one first fifo method in the fifo method we know that the closing stock figure reflect the current prices if the prices are reducing then fifo value is lesser however in the lifo method in the lifo method the closing stock value reflect the older inventory or the previous previous period inventory in the declining prices current prices are lesser and the earlier prices are higher therefore life of valuation inventory figure is higher in the case of declining prices right so in the persistently deflationary environment deflationary environment is gradual decrease in price environment it possible for lifo reserve to have a negative balance which is caused by lifo inventory valuation being higher than the fifo valuation i hope that you have clearly understood the lifo reserve and the impact in the case of declining prices right now let's see the next one so other than that to decline the lifo reserve the main reason is the lifo liquidation so what is this lifo liquidation so lifo liquidation is refers to the practice of selling or issuing all the merchandise stocks or materials in the company so if we are have all the materials if they are outdated what we are going to do we are going to put a discount price and we are going to sell the older stocks right in the case if the firm is selling more inventory than purchase so we have the inventory 
we have the opening inventory, we have the purchases, then we have the closing inventory. If the organization is selling more inventory means our closing inventory value may be lesser. Let's understand that point. Then in the inflationary period, right, the file for valuation inventory reflect the current prices. If the closing stock value is lesser, file for valuation inventory is also lesser. In the case of life for valuation, closing inventory reflect the older inventory value. So in the case of inflation, the life for inventory value is higher than the FIFO valuation. Therefore, it is resulting in life for liquidation. Right? So hence, the organization use life for inventory costing method liquidates its older life for inventory. This reduces the cost of goods sold, thereby it will increase the profit. Why? Because in this situation, right, if the life for valuation is higher, it means the closing inventory value is higher in the life form. If the closing inventory value is higher, in other words, it means that cost of sales figure is lower. If the cost of sales figure is lower, our profit will increase. If the profit increase, the life or reserve value is decreased. Then we will move on to the next one. How does the inflation affect FIFO and LIFO inventory valuation methods? So we know that gradual increase in price is known as the inflation. Gradual decrease in price is known as the deflation. Right? So let's see the impact in inflation under FIFO and LIFO methods. Right? So inflation lead to increasing cost and item acquired first is cheaper. And this decrease the cost of goods sold under FIFO. At the same time, it will increase the profit. If the profit are higher, we know that income tax figure is larger. And the value of unsold inventory, which means the closing inventory, figure is higher in the FIFO in the inflationary scenario. Let's focus on the LIFO method. <clears throat> LIFO method is if the cost are increasing, then the recently acquired items are more expensive. This increase the cost of goods sold under LIFO method and it decreases the net profit. In the LIFO method, we are going to sell the current items. If the prices are higher, if the prices are increasing, then the cost of sales figure is higher in the LIFO method. The inventory remaining as the closing inventory reflect the older prices. Therefore, the closing stock figure is lesser. As a result, our net profit figure may be lesser. If the net profit is lesser, then the income tax is smaller. And in this one, the value of unsold inventory, which means the closing inventory, is lower. These are the effects under FIFO and LIFO. Here we have to explain what is the inflation, what is the impact on FIFO and LIFO. Can you please mute yourself, the particular student? Yes, ice cream horn is going. 
right? Then the next one, we have to focus on the cost of sales figure. Then we have to focus on the profit figure. At the same time, inventory figure. Four marks is allocated. First, we have to explain how the inflation impact on FIFO and LIFO. Then what is the impact on the cost of sales? Then what is the impact on the closing inventory? And finally, the impact on the income tax. Now let's move on to the next part. So here, the BNP Trading Company disclosed the following information for the month of August 2020. So you have the beginning inventory values, then you have the sales, purchases, and the inventory figures they have exchanged for particular values. Now let's first prepare the FIFO method, right? Then we are going for the LIFO method because in the first question, they are requesting you to compute the value of inventory under these two methods, just for two marks. Then we have to calculate the FIFO profit and right life for cost of goods sold then life for profit and life for profit and life for reserve so don't waste much time so if you are going for the traditional method such as this purchase sales and balance it will take huge time normally to prepare this table it will consume more than four minutes for you but if you are efficient enough go for this method right so here first we are going to record the beginning inventory then we are going to record the sales then we are going to record the purchases and finally we are going to arrive at the closing inventory value at the same time we can use this method for life or valuation as well. I'm not going to explain it to you because we are going to calculate this method in the A-levels in the first year. So you are thorough enough to calculate by using these FIFO and LIFO based on the tabular method. Now I'm going to show you an easier method of calculating FIFO and LIFO inventory values. So here, First, calculate the cost of sales figure. The cost of sales figure is mainly focusing on the inventory we are going to issue. Earlier, wait. Earlier, we have the beginning inventory of 600. So now, August 10, we are going to say, 400 unit. So from 600, we have to deduct 400. So now this 400 is issued under FIFO method at the earlier prices, which is 5 rupees. Therefore, the cost of sales figure is 400 into 5, that is 2000. Now, after selling 400, there will be balance of 200. Then, August 11, we are going to pay chase 1,600 units. So, we have to add 200 for that one, 1,600. So, we have 1,800 units. Now, from these 1,800 units, on August 15, we are going to sell 1,000 units. In the FIFO method, we are going to use the first in, first out. First inventory we have issued first. Therefore, first we have to issue this balance 200 of the previous one. Then we have to issue another 800 more. That 800 more will be based on the price of 1,600 units. Altogether, 2,200 plus 800 means 
thousand. So let's issue this two hundred first. So two hundred is based on the previous price of five rupees. Then that is thousand. Now we have to issue eight hundred more to complete this thousand units of sales. Therefore, this eight hundred will be based on the thousand six hundred units which we have purchased at six rupees. Therefore, the cost is four thousand eight hundred. Now, then again, we have purchased thousand units at six rupees and fifty cents on twentieth August. So we have to add back that value. Now we have issued this six hundred in two times. First four hundred, then two hundred. So there won't be any inventory in this units, and in the thousand six hundred set, we have already issued eight hundred. Therefore, eight hundred balance is there. Then we have to add the recent purchase of thousand. To the inventory. Now, in August twenty seventh, we are going to sell six hundred units. So, according to the five four method, first we have to issue this six hundred from this balance eight hundred, which we have purchased on August eleven. So, that is six hundred into six. Right, so this is the value of the cost of sales under five four method. First, we are going to show four hundred. That is based on the balance inventory. Then we are left with two hundred again of that balance. So we are going to issue that two hundred on fifteenth August. Then to complete the balance, we have to again issue eight hundred. That is based on the thousand six hundred units. Then, on August twenty seventh, we have to sell six hundred units. That is based on six rupees. So altogether, the cost of sales figure is eleven thousand four hundred under five four method. Now let's see what is the value. Of the closing inventory. So earlier we have six hundred. We have issued four hundred on August tenth. Then we are going to add thousand six hundred units. Then from that value, we are going to issue thousand. Then we are left with eight hundred units. To this eight hundred units, we are going to add the purchase again on August twentieth. That is thousand eight hundred. From that thousand eight hundred, we are going to sell six hundred units. So now our closing inventory reflect thousand two hundred. This is the method of five four. Therefore, in the five four method, our closing inventory should be reflect the current prices. Therefore, let's calculate the closing stock by remembering the that concept. There are thousand two hundred units. Now, under five four method, closing inventory reflect the current prices. Therefore, first we are going to take the recent inventory, that is thousand units. This thousand unit is at Six rupees and fifty cents. So first, we are going to take that figure. Then for that one, we are going to add the balance. Balance is two hundred. That two hundred is from the previous one. So in this five four method, we are going from bottom to top. Right. So we are going to value the inventory based on bottom to top. So. Here, two hundred is based on six rupees. 
then the total closing stock value is 7,700. Now let's calculate the same inventory based on the LIFO method. So let's calculate the cost of sales. In the LIFO one, what we are going to do, first we are going to issue the recent stocks. Then we are going to keep the older stock in the inventory. First of all, we have 600 units. Then on August 10th, we are going to sell 400 from this 600. So the closing stock figure is 400 into 5. That is 2000. Then for this balance 200, we are going to add the purchase on 11th August. That is at 6 rupees. Then on 15th August, we are going to sell 1000 units. So according to the LIFO method, we are going to issue the recent stocks first. So what is the recent stock? If we are on 15th August, the recent one is which we have purchased on 11th August. That is at 6 rupees. So this 1000 should be valued at 6 rupees. Then we are left with 800 units on 15th August after issuing 1000 units. Then we are going to add another 1000 on 20th August as purchase. Out of that, we are going to sell 600 units on 27th August. So altogether from this inventory, we are going to issue 600. So the balance is 1,200. Since this is the LIFO method, this 600 is based on the recent prices. So the recent purchase is 1,000 units at 650. Therefore, this 600 should be issued at 6 rupees and 50 cents. That is 3,900. So when we add them together, we can get the closed of sales figure as 11,900. Now let's calculate the closing inventory. So in the LIFO method, cost of sales is 11,900. Now we have to calculate the closing stock. So the closing stock will be reflect the earlier prices. We know that balance we have 600, we have issued 400 on 10th August. Then again, we are purchasing 1,600 on 11th August. Then we are issuing 1,000 on 15th August. Then we are again purchasing 1,000 units on 20th August. And again, we are issuing 600 units at 27th August. So let's calculate the cost of sales. So sorry, let's calculate the closing stock. So the closing stock figure should be reflect the earlier prices, right? So this is based on four figures. Let's see. First, we have to segregate this 1,200. Since we have issued this 600 from this 1,000 units based on LIFO method. Why? What we are going to do this? Because in the LIFO method, we are going to issue the recent stocks. Therefore, this 600 issued from this 1,000 units. Therefore, we are left with 400 units. So this 400 units is based on 6 rupees and 50 cents. Clear? Then we are focusing on the next one. Next, we are issue this 1,000 units, right? So this 1,000 units is issued 
from this 1,600 units. If we have purchased 1,600 units, if we issued 1,000 units, then we have a balance of 600. 1,600 minus 1,000. So this 600 should be valued at 6 rupees. That is 3,600. So from the beginning inventory of 600, we have issued 400 on 10th August. So there is a balance of 200. And this should be valued at the earlier price of 5 rupees. The closing stock figure is 1000 plus 3600 plus 2600. That is 7200. Don't worry, I will put this in the YouTube. So then next one. Here, they ask you to calculate the closing inventory value, then the cost of sales as well as the gross profit. So the closing inventory value under FIFO is 7,700. If you are not familiar with the this method, you can go for the tabular method as well, right? Even though it's consumed time, if you are convenient with that, go for that one. So you can find the inventory balance as 7,700. Then in the LIFO, the inventory balance is 7,200. The cost of sales figure in the FIFO method is 11,400. And LIFO is 11,900. So when there is an inflationary scenario, which means gradual increase in price, the LIFO cost is higher than, FIFO cost is higher than the LIFO cost. Just see this one. So here, the purchasing prices are increasing. Five first, then six, then 650 which means the prices are gradually increasing, which means there is inflation. When there is inflation, closing inventory balance is higher in the FIFO method than the LIFO method. At the same time, cost of sales figure is lesser in FIFO method and LIFO method. So you can prove this assumption by calculating these figures as well. Then let's move on to the gross profit figure. So gross profit is the sales minus cost of sales. I hope that you can calculate the sales figure. How can we calculate the sales figure? First, we have to take 400. Then we have to multiply it with 12. So first, 400 into 12, that is 4,800. For that figure, we have to add 1,000 into 12 rupees and 50 cents. That is 1,250. Sorry, 12,500. Wait. That is 12,500. Then we have to take the recent sales. That is 600 into 13 rupees and 50 cents. Now add these values and see what is the value you are getting. So here the value is 8,100. If we add these figures together, we are getting 
25,400. That's how we are arrived at the sales figure. First, we are going to take 400 into 12. Then, we are going to take this 1000 into 1250. Then we are going to take this 600 into 13 rupees and 50 cents. Altogether, the value is by adding these three figures 25,400. So, this is how we have arrived at the gross profit figure. So now we have to calculate the LIFO reserve. LIFO reserve is the difference between FIFO inventory value and the LIFO inventory value. So when we are taking the closing inventory and when we are taking the difference between them, we are coming up 500 as the LIFO reserve value. So this is the end of question number three.